David Brewster here with another Brewster's Millions of Rants, and this is the Winter Wonder Jam. And wintertime, you know, when it's cold outside, I always find myself slowing down. You know, I kind of take my time. I make sure I'm warmed up properly. I don't push myself too soon or too early, you know, in the wintertime. In the spring and the summer, when it's warmer, sometimes I'll just grab my guitar and start playing something crazy. But in the wintertime, I rarely ever do that. I always, you know, think first and it's like, okay, let me limber up or loosen up a little bit and then I'll try playing something crazy. Um, and I've never injured my hands. You know, I've never had uh, carpal tunnel syndrome or repetitive stress disorder or tendonitis or anything like that. And I think a big part of that is because I've always warmed up, you know, taken care of my hands, you know, started slow. And even if I felt like shredding, I, I rarely ever just start shredding or playing something fast. I usually work up to it, you know, to make sure that I don't hurt myself. The first step to this lesson is to show everyone that doesn't already know this, um, how you can acquire or how you can create or make um, musicians gloves for the wintertime. And typically, you know, if it starts getting cold, like in October, November, I usually end up doing this and then I'll continue doing it through the winter until spring and you might be thinking musicians gloves you know hey I don't have you know the money for these designer you know fancy gloves you know I didn't say anything about fancy or designer um, you know I'm a very practical person and kind of a do-it-yourselfer and you know try to always find a low-cost easy way to do almost everything and maybe that's not the best way <laughs> to live life but it works for me and it's always kind of been that way but what I'm talking about is going to a gas station and grabbing a pair of gloves like these. Now typically you can find these for like a dollar ninety nine. Maybe if you're shopping at a you know a, a well-to-do gas station like a shell or something you might have to pay two ninety nine. But typically you can get a pair of these you know moving gloves or yard gloves for about two or three dollars. And you might be thinking oh those ugly things. Yes these ugly things. Um, they typically have a rake and leaves on the front. This one actually has a bowl too. But the brown, you know, generic gloves that you typically find at gas stations, truck, shop, uh, truck stops and stuff like that. So what I do is I buy a pair of these, take a pair of scissors, and I literally just cut the fingers off. You know, leave a little bit just to kind of, so you can kind of keep your, you know, part of your fingers warm. But literally, just cut the fingers off. I mean, these were $2, so I'm not really worried about losing the fingers. It's not a big deal. And I'm doing this just to demonstrate, um, you know, how you can acquire musician's gloves. Now, if you have a ton of money laying around and you're like, well, I don't want to wear $2 gloves, then yeah, you can get fancy fingerless gloves from the mall or wherever. And, uh, you know, but... The nice thing about these, and the main reason why I do this, I mean, I've had a lot of people tease me over the, the years too, like, dude, why are you wearing gloves? It's October or November. It's not even cold. It's not snowing. And it's like, I don't care. As soon as I, it starts getting a little bit cold, it's like my hands can tell and they get cold and I find myself putting my hands in my pockets first. And as soon as I find myself doing that, I buy a pair of these, cut the fingers off. And when you do that, Check it out, you can actually still play your guitar. So if you have like an outdoor gig, maybe you're rehearsing in a garage and there's not very much heat or you're in a cold, you know, drafty basement or something. Now I realize that these are kind of gaudy and you might be thinking, dude, those are ugly. Um, I'm not trying to make a fashion statement here. I'm trying to keep my hands warm. And you know, I'm not really a fan of like the big, let's make a snowman, let's make an igloo kind of winter gloves, the big puffy ones because you can't do anything. You can't open a door or grab a cup of coffee or something. I mean, they feel very restricting, you know, but this, even though I know my, you know, my fingertips are exposed, but it, it's at least, you know, kind of keeping most of my hand, you know, warm and covered. And if it's really cold outside, then obviously I can stick them in my pockets. If it's very cold, if it's, you know, 20 below or something, I have actual gloves I can put on my hands. This is just kind of a cheap alternative that I find myself using, you know, to and from rehearsals or gigs or lessons or sessions or whatever I'm doing. And, you know, if I know I'm going to be playing guitar and I've played some outdoor gigs where I've used these, you know, where I could see my breath on stage 
And I thought, man, I'm glad I stopped at the gas station and got my gloves because they really do help. You know, if you find yourself clean in a cold room or a cold stage or whatever. But the nice thing is if they get dirty, which they will, if you wear them through a season, they're going to get sweaty and dirty and, you know, you're going to spill stuff on them or they're going to fall, you know, between the seats in your car or whatever. And the nice thing is whenever it starts to warm up again, you can literally just take them off and throw them away because they only cost two dollars. You can toss them in the trash and forget about them until it's cold and then you need to do it all over again. So for two dollars a year, I can, you know, have Musician's Club and keep some, you know, keep my hands protected and keep them warm, which I think that's a pretty good deal. Two dollars a year, maybe three if I go to Shell, <laughs> you know. For this lesson, we're going to have three exercises and they're all going to revolve loosely around F sharp blues or the F sharp, you know, minor blue scale. And just think of an F sharp, you know, minor pentatonic with a flat five. And I'm a pretty big fan of, you know, anything with the flat five. You know, whether it's, you know, diminished tonalities or the blues scale itself. And it's very popular. You'll hear it in rock and metal and jazz and classical and a lot of different styles of music. And the first exercise is basically flirting with the flat five, you know, here in F sharp. And we're going to do three different things. We're going to slide in and out of it. We're going to basically use hammer-ons and pull-offs in and out of it. And then we're going to literally, you know, kind of fret through it too. So we're gonna slide, legato, and fret, like this. Something like that. And basically, um, you can see I'm starting there with a the slide. And then I'm almost doing like a Jimmy Page lick there. And then I'm fretting the, instead of sliding that I'm fretting that same pattern. And then I'm doing the Jimmy Page kind of pull off again. So all the way through that first shape. And then just move everything you did up uh, basically a minor third that's going to move F sharp minor blues to A minor blues. And take that, move it up another minor third, now you have C minor blues. Move up another minor third, now you're playing E flat or D sharp uh, minor blues. move up another minor third, we're basically an octave higher than where we started, so we're back on F sharp minor blues. It's a pretty good warm up and it's actually kind of challenging you because you have to, you know, basically use slides, um, you know, hammer on some pull offs, you're also kind of doing a little bit of picking in there. And it's a challenge, but it's not a super huge challenge yet, that's kind of a good place to start with just a good kind of sequenced, uh, shifting, you know, melodic idea. The next exercise is still in F sharp minor blues. Um, but we're actually using, you know, kind of the fingering from uh, the next position of F sharp minor blues or, F, you know, F sharp minor pentatonic. And I'm also, you know, including the note D here. So I'm kind of adding, you know, a note that doesn't normally appear in the minor pentatonic in F sharp. And that would kind of flirt with Aeolian a little bit or the natural minor scale. But this next variation uh, looks and sounds like this. And this actually works with uh, finger independence quite well, too. So it looks like this. And that's the first pattern. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna move that up in minor thirds again. Um, you know, F sharp up to A and then to C and then to E flat and then back to F sharp. Um, and if you get confused as far as shifting this, when you do that pattern, you 
you're basically going to move your index finger where your third finger is. So kind of, you know, as you play that, look and see where you are. And then as you shift, just basically move your index finger to where your third finger was. <laughs> Okay, and then shift up. And then do it again. You know, shift where your third finger is. And then do it again. Shift where that third finger is. And right there we're basically, you know, an octave higher than where we started. So we kind of completed, you know, the cycle. But that's another, you know, challenging exercise, loosely based around the same scale. And it's using, you know, a little bit different, uh, you know, some different parts of your technique in your, uh, your fret hand. There, you know, you're kind of using finger independence because you're grabbing things on different strings with different fingers. And they're definitely working, you know, separately or independently. <laughs> It's also melodic. It's something you can kind of hear and you can kind of push, you know, as you move from shape to shape. And um, I definitely like using exercises like that. It's way more interesting than just playing some kind of chromatic, you know, nightmare kind of exercise or some symmetrical, you know, exercise that doesn't really sound like music. Um, I always prefer to find exercises that are musical or melodic or rhythmic in some way or something, you know, more than just some twilight zone odd sounding exercise and those are good sometimes to work on but um you know i'm attempting to make music so i prefer to warm up playing music instead of some bizarre strange otherworldly you know weird exercise but uh, one more time here and right there you can hear i was picking more you could actually use that more as a picking exercise if you wanted to or you could do more legato. And then as you start moving around, a good exercise and it's melodic you know it's kind of musical the last exercise in this lesson you know kind of pushes things a little bit further and you know we're just slowly kind of making things a little bit more challenging as we finish warming up and kind of getting you know your hand ready to start playing guitar and i've actually used this exercise a lot this winter so this is kind of a new exercise that i'm sharing and i have hundreds and hundreds of exercises that i've either written or i've borrowed or noticed or kind of you know, scribbled down or made photocopies, you know, if it's like some famous guitarist or something in a guitar magazine. Because really, if you start looking around, you can find all sorts of exercises and warm-ups from, you know, Steve Vai and John Petrucci and Paul Gilbert. And there's tons and tons of them, you know, just kind of hiding out there. And you can find them in rock and jazz and classical and, you know, different styles of music, too. So this one actually is going to start on E-flat in that cycle that we've been doing. So it's going to be... Uh, E flat and then F sharp and then A and then C and then we're going to end with E flat. But it looks like this. And that's our little sequence there. So the first part. Move up, you know, a minor third. And then do it again. It's 
interesting because you have this motif, you know, this melodic phrase that we're shifting. And if you've seen some of my other lessons and kind of notice, you know, when I share exercises and sequences and things like this, uh, I love moving things in minor thirds. You know, it gives me a chance to hear it in other keys. It also gives me a chance to kind of explore the fretboard with the idea and try it in different locations. And it also kind of gets my brain prepared for seeing it somewhere else on the neck. Because if you lock in and you always play it in the same key or the same fretboard region, your brain's going to get familiar with how it looks there. And if you transport it somewhere else, you're going to get lost because you're not used to seeing it or hearing it or playing it somewhere else on the guitar neck. One thing I really like about that exercise in particular, which I like all of these exercises, um, but that one in particular, the last one, um, you know, it's kind of new. I just, you know, kind of came up with it this, you know, season, I guess, the end of 2019 into 2020. So it's new, you know, to my fingers and my ears where it's like, yeah, cool, there's something different. You know, it's not the same old exercises. But uh, there's that motif, you know, your ear is hearing a pattern of notes. And then whenever you finish that cycle, you know, you know, you're supposed to shift it and it's going to go up higher. And you could do it backwards, too. You could start much higher and then move down the fretboard. That way, you know, the, the frets are going to be much closer together. And as you move down, you're going to start spacing the, the stretch, you know, as the frets kind of become wider, you know, lower on the fretboard. So that would be a good stretching exercise to start kind of close and then slowly start fanning your fingers out too. But uh, one more time here. Those exercises let you know, like if you mess up somewhere, you flub a note, it's really obvious because you kind of lock into that pattern and that little melodic motif. And if something's not right, your ear catches it like, hey, you just made a mistake, pal. And you know, that that's a good thing to, to practice because that way you know if you're nailing it or you're not quite nailing it. That's going to wrap the winter wonder jam. And this is really just a guide to, you know, help keep your hands warm and limber and kind of you know, keep things moving in the cold months of the year. But obviously, if you live in Hawaii or Ecuador or someplace that's 80 to 90 you know, degrees year round, then you're not going to experience the same thing that, say, a musician would in the Midwest or Minnesota or Canada or Iceland or something like that. You know, if you have a cold season where it definitely, you know, snows and gets cold, then you need to take care of yourself, you know, wear gloves and warm up and make sure, you know, before you just start shredding some crazy impellitary solo, that your hands are ready, you know, to do something like that. And if you think of people that run marathons or they work out or they have, you know, physical exercise, they always stretch and limber up and they'll kind of, you know, prepare for what they're about to do. And as a guitarist, you should do the same thing. And keep in mind, most of the exercises I shared here are kind of intermediate to advanced level. So if you're a beginner, these are not exercises for you. There are tons and tons of beginning exercises out there. But this is an attempt of kind of helping, you know, some intermediate to advanced players that have already been playing. And maybe you've seen a lot of those same old, same old, you know, exercises. So uh, I have tons of stuff like this. And I'm going to share more in the future. So leave some feedback in the comments. Please subscribe to Late Night Lessons. Keep your hands warm and uh, thank you.